Hi and welcome to another one of my vintage iFi reviews. Today I'm going to be talking about Celestial Ditton 15 speakers, not to get mixed up with a Celestial Ditton 15XR, which you can tell the difference pretty much straight away with a different sweeter that, that one's got. Right, um, I've done this comparison with three other speakers today, but obviously I'm taking this speaker on its own merit and how it sounded anyway, but Having the other two pairs there as well to make up the three did give me an idea of how different it did sound compared with the others. I used two receivers for the test and swapped between them at various stages. Um, and also I used a speaker switch box which a friend of mine lent me. I think it was made by Tandy, realistic, and it allows you to connect up, I think, four pairs of speakers on this box. Yeah, four pairs of speakers and connect it to the back of your amp. You can do something similar yourself by connecting your own amplifier to two pairs of speakers. Most amps have got speaker A and speaker B and AB as well. So you could do a test yourself between two sets of speakers while you're listening to a track so you can flip between one and the other. I won't flip backwards and forwards too fast. I'll do it, you know, give a good listen then back again. will not go like that. And, Know, maybe blow it or something like that. I kept the volume at about halfway near enough to be honest with you on both amplifiers. About number four, sometimes it in number five. Try to get both speakers, well, all, all three speakers at the same volume. So it was a fair test. Um, yeah, and that's it really. Um, the receivers I used was, um, and it was a reason, because this is rated 15 watts on some sites and 30 watts on another. So I wanted to play you know, very safe. So I picked two receivers and they were my Pioneer SX300. And that's just rated at seven watts per channel. And the other one was a Senio DCX200 receiver, which is rated at 13 watts per channel. Um, was the reason I used the Senio one. Um, cause it, well, I won't say it yet. I've got a video coming up about something else, which will explain that a bit more. But anyway, I placed the speakers in the same position or near enough the same position to each other as I could for um, in a fairly medium sized room, I would say in the UK, maybe a, a closet in America or other places, but it's seven meters by about three and a half meters. And this was down one end, you know, we're at the narrower end uh, and the speakers were pretty much the same. Try to get them near enough, all three pairs, the same from the wall so there you know it's pretty you know one maybe close to the wall there where the other one would be a bit further away try to match them up so they're the same kind of width apart and they kind of had a reasonable similar characteristics to the wall and the surroundings of the uh, of the room but anyway i don't think it would have mattered that much anyway to be honest with you right so this come out i'm going to read a few bits i've found on the internet now they did vary a little bit so this isn't gospel but it's, it's going to be near enough i think to make no odds. This came out in 1967-ish in the UK um, and it's rated at 90 dB sensibility, uh, sensitivity which I think is correct. On some sites it said 87 but I've got a pair of speakers rated at 88 and this did sound louder uh, than them so I would say it was 90. Uh, rated at 30 watts or 15 depending where you read and this was about 60 pound at launch and that is about five or six hundred pound in today's money I would have said it's 21 inches high by 9 inches across and the depth is 9.5 inches and as you can see it's quite a solid box it's quite well built it's got quite a nice finish to it I think I think it's veneered but it's you know it's got quite a nice finish to it um, the speaker terminals are kind of like screwing ones we have to get a little spade thing to put your speaker wire on or um, wind the wire around it a few times maybe to get a good connection now i know some people think that uh taking this off and connecting straight to the uh crossover board would make you know make they can hear the difference it makes a sound difference that what i think then people need knocking up yourself because i just can't see how you can tell the difference between these you know connections here and connecting it straight up to the uh crossover board to, to me, I think that's not only possible. We must have an unbelievably good ear, I would have said, because I, I can't I can't possibly tell the difference, that's for certain. Anyway, it's got um, an eight-inch driver here and an eight-inch passive driver here, which um, is, is a, I think they call it a muffler, which um, 
just really uh, reduces the amount of air being sucked in through these very small holes here when the driver goes backwards and forwards. And I've taken it out and listened to it with it out and I've put it back in. And there is a vast amount of bass difference with that out to in. You will hear a vast amount of extra bass with that installed. This here apparently is a HF1300 stroke 11 tweeter, which is seen in Rogers and Splendor speakers. I think that's at the time, I'm not too sure if that's current. But um, anyway, so yeah, it's quite a well-known tweeter apparently, but I honestly don't know a lot about it. All I do know, reading a few reviews, that it cuts off at about 15 kilohertz, which is just needs to go a bit further in some people's opinion for the treble, kind of cuts the treble off a bit too early. Um, yeah, I found the treble could have been a bit brighter maybe. I, you know, I wasn't disappointed in it really, to be honest with you. But um, uh, yeah, I think a little bit more may have helped there, just you know, a bit on the higher end may have helped. Uh, I think this was addressed with this Celestial Ditton XR15s, but then there's a mixed reviews on that. Some people still prefer the original to the 15 XRs, and some prefer the XR. So it, it, it's your own personal listening taste and preferences, I think. But um, anyway, that's that. I think I pretty much covered that little bit there, let you know what I'm using and how much it costs and etc. Now. Um, I found the bass on this, I mean, I, I played a multitude of different tracks. I used to be a big Blondie fan, so I did play a few Blondie CDs. This was over um, yesterday, pretty much all day, I was mucking about with these and the other two pairs I was playing with. So I was listening to quite a bit of Blondie, but it was very 70s disco, 80s disco, a bit of rock and stuff like that. So yeah, it was quite varied. Uh, Give it a good listen. It was nice to have the speaker switch box, so I didn't have to remember how one sounded, then compare it with another. I could straight away switch over. And give me a good impression and all that so I also done it on its own merits as well how I felt it sounded anyway yeah I found the bass was nice and tight I like the bass in this it was a good bass I think um, I felt the vocals were a bit too forward a bit bit on you know the, the, especially uh, women's for female vocals was a bit harsh they seemed a bit on the harsh side uh, that's how I felt though it did improve with a pioneer amplifier I did I did find the pioneer just help that help that vocal out a little bit didn't make it so harsh though it still was harsh but not quite as harsh as it was with the Sanio one um, yeah so the vocals were a bit harsh I felt um, a bit edgy and rough that's how um, I heard it like I say I'm no expert but that's how I kind of heard it um, a bit shh, shh, you know it could, a bit like like when they're, when they're singing you kind of hear this you know kind of too much if you know what I mean I overcompensated for that uh, graspy kind of thing um, but like I say with the Pioneer it seemed to control that a bit better the, the drums sounded really nice and I did like the sound of the drums on this speaker it sounded like very good I, I, I would say um, I, I felt the speaker like it was, you know, it was quite spacey it gives us you know quite a lot of space to it felt quite uh, I know um, quite wide you know that kind of thing um, yes yeah, so on, on, on that bit it, it sounded fine um, like I say, I listened to Blondie and, and some, some like um, smoother stuff and some rock, and I found that maybe this speaker is more suited to rock, I would say, more of a rock speaker maybe with that harshness and um, you know with the vocals and stuff like that, and and, and the bass it was, it was really nice. So yeah, maybe maybe more of a rock speaker maybe this one than um, than you know than like a smoother kind of sound in music I would have said this, this is probably more suited to rock that's how I felt anyway um, like I said I could be totally wrong but um, I don't know I did give a good listen and that's, that's my opinion everyone's got different opinions like all these reviews some people give it a, a blind review and some people will say no it's, you know, it's no good and that's how these reviews different people's hearing and, and, and how they you know their kind of style of music I did, did not uh, did not uh, um, mess about with the tone controls on either amplifiers. I left them at dead zero on both. Um, I thought that was a fairer rather than mucking about trying to get a decent sound out of it. Um, but all in all, that, that, that's my opinion on this speaker. Um, and I'm gonna give a rating now on anything I actually review. I think I'll give a rating. Um, anything above five is probably I'm, I'm gonna keep for the time being until um, I, you know, I'll get too much stuff, which I've got already to be honest with you, and start selling some stuff. then. Hopefully, selling two items to get in one more, then that item may be a bit more up, bit up, bit more up market. So I may work my way up, selling a few items and getting a bit better um, units around me, 
uh, in the future. I don't know, we'll see how it pans out, but I do like picking up bargains and things that are fairly cheap for, you know, for people who want to set up a, a cheap system, don't want to spend a fortune, because I mean, to, in today's money, a speaker like this is probably going to cost you, you know, two or three hundred pounds, and you'd be better off spending, what would these be on eBay, you know, place Cra Cra Craigslist and um, Facebook and places like that, uh, Gumtree, probably 50, 60 pound. I mean, 100 pound would be absolute top, so I won't pay no more 100 pound for it, that's for certain. So yeah, 50 or 60 pound. We still got a decent speaker, I think, and uh, you know, de definitely be better than a speaker maybe today you're paying 200 quid for. Uh, maybe, you know, that, that's my opinion. Uh, not unless you get really lucky and you know, pick up a decent one new for 200 pound somewhere. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, this kind of size speaker, I mean, I'm not talking about a bookshelf, I'm talking about, you know, a, a bit bigger speaker than the bookshelf for 200 quid. You know, maybe you can, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't got any to compare it with, but um, yeah, I still think that, you know, th this is quite good value for 50, 60 pound. I wouldn't, you know, 100 pound would be absolute top, so I wouldn't really want to pay 100 pound for it, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, that's just my opinion, some people, you know, obviously will. Um, that's it really, um, yeah, I will come up with another video very, very shortly on another speaker out of the three that I um, tested today, I'm going to hold one back for a bit later on, and um, that's it really, so um, I'll say thank you for watching, and I'll see you all soon, thank you.